Thereafter, you may hand over your documents to the sergeant to pass to the clerk so that as we go on, he'll be verifying with what we have on you. Honorable John Bandy, uh, we know you have been with us and you've been nominated by His Excellency the President to occupy the High Office of CS Treasury of the Republic of Kenya at a time when exceptional skills are required to help navigate the country through some difficult moments in our history. We want you to introduce yourself for the record, give us a little preview on your educational background, your work experience, and uh, why you feel suitable to hold the office to which you have been nominated. No more than five minutes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker and honorable members of the Appointments Committee of the National Assembly. And Mr. Speaker, as you rightly put it from the beginning, I know this committee has a constitutional mandate and responsibility uh, to vet appointments or nominations by the President. And so, uh, being colleagues notwithstanding. However, I just want to mention very quickly, Mr. Speaker, that um, John Buddy, as I've mentioned before and as you rightly mentioned, I was born 53 years ago, in a small village called Seka in Gwasi, uh, uh, Super South constituency of Homer Bay County. I went to school, uh, first um, Seka Primary School, three years. That's class one to three, class four to eight, in another school called Ligongo Primary School. I'll not go into the details because we don't have time to uh, talk about my childhood uh, history. I w then proceeded to Kokoro High School. Kokoro Boys is in Awendo constituency, modern day Awendo constituency, where I did my KCSE, and then later proceeded to the University of Nairobi School of uh, Business Studies, that is a, a faculty of commerce. I'm a graduate of accounting, and uh, I'm also a certified public accountant. Actually, I'm a member of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants, I am member number 6101, 6101, and I'm in good standing, Mr. Speaker, as can be attested by the uh, file that I've just passed across. Uh, then I must then move straight, uh, Mr. Speaker, to my work experience, uh, which uh, spans over 28 years now. After graduating from the University of Nairobi, Mr. Speaker, I was employed to work with the same university in the finance department. Started off at the very basic level, entry point for a graduate, which is assistant accountant, where I was basically doing uh, the routine accounting duties. Uh, but later I rose very quickly uh, to become an accountant, finally to senior accountant two, and, uh, and, and then finally to senior accountant one in which time now I was involved in more advanced accounting work. I actually was responsible for preparation of the final accounts for the university. I was in a team that was doing that and preparing for final audits. I was also involved largely in cash flow management for the university. I then later left the university uh, to work for an international organization called Media East Africa, it's a humanitarian organization with headquarters in Switzerland. I was the regional finance director responsible for supervising uh, the, the finance, finance departments of the region, region. That, that is Uganda, Uganda office, office uh, South, South Sudan Sudan office, office, Somali, Somali office, office, and the Kenya office. office. The budget for that organization, the regional budget, which I was responsible for, was uh, 8 million US dollars, which in the current foreign exchange rates could be about uh, 1 billion plus. And my duty in that organization, Mr. Speaker, was basically to uh, do fundraising, do the budget, preparation of budget and fundraising, ensuring uh, proper utilization and uh, uh, efficiency in financial management in the entire region. 
So I served there for three and a half years. Then I became a member of parliament, having won my seat for the first time uh, in the elections which were conducted on 29th of December 2007. I won Guasi parliamentary seat, a seat I won again subsequently, three times. Uh, actually, I, was, I have the record of the only person who has ever been elected in that constituency more than once. But having said that, Mr. Speaker, when I joined this parliament, I have done this now takes me even to the relevance of my nomination or the docket to which I'm nominated. Since I came to parliament for 15 years, from 2008-15 uh, January to 2022, say for a few months, like about seven, eight months when I served in the cabinet as assistant minister in the office of the president, I have always been a member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. This committee is the one that actually has the constitutional responsibility and mandate uh, to prepare or the budgets of this country. Actually, the budgets that come from the National Treasury are estimates. The budget is, act is a preserve and function of the National Assembly of the Republic of Kenya. So during which time, when I was a member of the Budget and Appropriation Committee, I interacted a lot with the Kenyan budget and the macroeconomic policies. I can, I can attest that I've interacted with the budget review outlook paper, which is always prepared every year. I am very comfortable with how to generate budget policy statements, budget estimates, finance bills, um, division of revenue bills, county allocation of revenue bill, generally budget process, and the debt management strategy paper. So, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to go into much detail, but let me just mention for relevance that as Assistant Minister in the Office of the President, I was also involved in helping the Prime Minister, I mean, in the Office of the Prime Minister, sorry. I was Assistant Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, and in that office, the responsibility of that office was basically to supervise and coordinate government functions in all ministries, departments, and state agencies, which is very much in line with what my role at the Treasury if this committee proposes my approval to the National Assembly and fi finally approved and appointed. In that office, Mr. Speaker, you will recall that there was no minister. And you will also recall that at the time I was appointed, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Members, there was not even a Deputy Prime Minister. Because remember, the former President, who was a Deputy Prime Minister, had uh, stepped aside because of the cases that he had at the ICC. And the current Prime Cabinet Secretary, who was another uh, Deputy Prime Minister, had already, because of political differences, uh, uh, practically left office. So I was basically Deputy or assistant prime minister <laughs> during that period that I was there. And so I, uh, by default, and I helped the prime minister in coordinating government functions. Now, um, quickly, uh, because I think my time is almost up, my work in public accounts committee, first as a member in the 11th parliament for five years, and later as the chairman now for two years from 2022, October, I have interacted with uh, how the government spends its revenue. So the government spend is something that now I understand very well. So if I'm given this opportunity, I can easily bring a difference in our financial management because that is a big concern in this country at the moment. Mr. Speaker, I think I would leave it there because if I went now to talk that about my, my political life and sharing ODM for 10 years, and I, I think I would take all the time that's allocated for this vetting. So let me start. That will do Mrs. for now. I'll invite members to ask you questions. And like I said, members, don't be prejudiced by the fact that John Buddy is your colleague. We have interviewed colleagues before, and you must be uh, able to ask questions without fear or favor. David Speaker, you'll go first. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Badi, I think this is within your forte. Uh, as you know, there's only two sources of revenue for government, which is borrowing or by taxing. Currently, uh, Kenya's public debt 
is approximately 72% of our GDP, which is what started causing concerns across the country. Um, and, uh, and, so, and also it has increased the debt servicing costs. It's affected our fiscal space for development projects. And so in the light of the rejection of the finance bill, if approved, if this appointment is approved, how do you plan to address Kenya's high public debt and ensure sustainable debt management? And in connection to that, uh, the Kenya Revenue Authority has struggled with tax collection and, uh, and has not been very efficient on doing that, and therefore we've had a tax revenue shortfall. And uh, all the efforts to try and increase the tax base and tax the informal sector has been heavily resisted, and, um, which leaves just the, those who are formally employed paying the tax. So what measures will you implement to improve tax collection and expand the tax base without overburdening the taxpayers? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, for these two very important questions. I will start with the issue of public debt. Mr. Speaker, it is true that public debt levels in this country is worrying. Uh, in terms of percentage, it could be 72, but I think it's still in the region of 67, 68 percent of our GDP, which is very high. Public debt, if you look at it in terms of a split between external debt and domestic debt, is almost 50-50. We are, we are at about 10.5 trillion at the moment, split almost 50-50. Uh, I would go into the details of the breakdown, but I think that would be too much information for, the now, for now. But I want to just mention that in terms of managing public debt, number one priority for me is debt accountability. If you listen to Kenyans at the moment and the discussions around debts, Kenyans seem to be asking, what is our actual level of debts? Is it really true that we have a debt level of 10.5 trillion? The answer could be yes, but Kenyans want proof and evidence. So debt accountability is number one priority for me. As a matter of fact, I have asked myself, if Kenyans owe people money, why can't Kenyans know the people they owe money, how much they owe them, and what is the rate, uh, the, the level of interest for each loan? You will hear excuses that there are certain agreements which probably discourages disclosure. But the question is, can't you come out transparently and explain to Kenyans which are these agreements stopping us from knowing who we owe money? One of the things that I think we need to do is to make a debt register a statutory document, which should be published every year, like we publish all the other documents. Kenyans should know. It is not the government that owes money to Chinese. It is the China government or to World Bank or to IMF. We know World Bank is the leading, single leading lender to Kenya in terms of amounts, followed by African Development Bank. Number three is China. Number four is Eurobond. These people don't, it is not the government which owes the money. It is not the treasury. It is the people of Kenya, the taxpayers who owe these people money. You cannot owe someone money without knowing how much you owe. So I want to put it that debt accountability is important. Two, we must work on linking projects to loans. We cannot borrow loans for general budgetary support. Actually, where we lost it, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker and Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, is from 2014, we shifted our borrowing strategy from specific donor-funded uh, projects to general support. What that means is that you do your maths, you calculate, your, you, you do your estimate, and then you get your revenue, and whatever is remaining, you put to debt. So debt comes to this country, like the Eurobond, without going to specific projects. How then would you pay that loan if it does not fund value-adding projects or proper investment in public assets? So that is something that we must 
do going forward i'm talking about now going forward because what has happened has happened we'll have to deal with it but going forward that is what we must do a lot has been said about revenue mobilization and the focus has been that we should be changing tax rates we should be increasing tax rates we should be coming up with new taxes i don't think that is the solution the solution to tax mobilization or revenue mobilization should be targeting the tax collector, KRA. KRA is like a cow which we milk without feeding. We have a provision that 2% of our revenue should go towards building capacity of KRA. But we don't do it. Look at the system that uh, KRA is using at the moment. It needs re-engineering. If you, uh, you hear or you listen to those who are involved in collecting taxes, especially do, um, especially um, uh, custom duties. Custom duties, we are losing a lot through smuggling, through counterfeit products, because we don't have a system. We don't have a, a system that is foolproof, a system that can help us uh, manage uh, some of these tax leakages. Remember there was a time, and I'm sure many of us, almost all of us here are old enough, you'll remember, that there was a time when KRA had a very good policy of graduate recruitment into KRA, and they were properly trained, like even for two years. You must have properly trained tax experts. The way we are recruiting staff at KRA at the moment and deploying them needs to be re-looked into. You cannot have people who are not properly trained to collect taxes from people who hire properly trained accountants to calculate their taxes. I also want to say that you need to look at the leadership and management of KRA in general. So my, one of my first tasks will be to make sure that I have a sitting with KRA to look at how we can reform that institution. Because there was a time in this country, not long ago, when we were collecting 18% of our gen, uh, GDP as taxes. Today it is 14%. If we could just increase from 14% to 18% of GDP, you'll be adding about 600 billion to our revenue base. So you'll be reducing the fiscal deficit and the fiscal gaps that we have. But finally, you talked about um, the finance bill that has been lost. I want to tell Kenyans, please don't panic. Let us stop making Kenyans panic. Mr. Speaker, you have been here with me. In the 10th parliament, and even some, uh, I think up to 11th parliament, Finance bill used to be passed in September. We used to have three months in the, into the financial year to, finance, to pass finance bill. The minister then was allowed by law through a revenue collection order to allow for some taxes, interim taxes to be collected. But the bottom line is the law could be in place in September, on September 30th. So there is no cause of alarm. We have a legal framework which is still obtaining. Uh, you know, yes, the uh, Finance Act of 2023 has been declared unconstitutional, although I don't know whether I'm correct, that has been appealed. If that is correct, that is good. But still, we don't have a lacuna. In fact, Finance Bill is an omnibus amendment bill. We have uh, about five or six legislations that finance bill usually amends. We have excise duty, we have in, uh, 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 excise duty, we have uh, uh, import duty, we have uh, value added tax, we have income tax, we have tax procedures act, and then we have fees and levies. These are specific legislations. Mr. Speaker, this house, if I'm approved, this house should help me bring these legislations directly touching on these specific statutes. We don't have to have a finance bill, but I'll seek the guidance and advice from the Attorney General. But I believe the good provisions which have been lost by this bill, which are not contentious, and there are many, which can still help this country grow the economy, we can bring them as specific amendments to those acts with proper public yes to the mother act with proper public participation because i think the problem we had was that the public felt there was no proper public participation which we had but maybe they felt they were not listened to so we'll do the proper public participation uh, on some of these provisions okay. i wanted to stop there mr should, Speaker, but, should, but, yes. but there was a question on carry i think i've combined them you've combined yes i've combined the two 
<coughs> you are birds of a feather. <laughs> I, I, I hope we won't flock together. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. First, on a light note, Honorable Speaker, you know, I have always argued with John Buddy on the floor on who qualified before the other. <laughs> now that we are birds of a feather, I can now confirm from his certificates that I actually qualified six months ahead of him. <laughs> but, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, Besides being birds of a feather in the profession, um, let me declare interest because John Buddy was also an accountant at the university when I was a student there. And having served with him in this house for uh, almost 12 years, and I chaired the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Where Buddy, now CS nominee for finance. In the National Treasury, you, and you've put it very well, and uh, you know there are many things that we agree on, especially regarding the budget making process. And uh, having been a member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and also chaired the Public Accounts Committee, you have said you have had a very good uh, oversight of the Expenditure Side Loans Committee. You have said you have had a very good uh, oversight of the Expenditure Side of Government. And uh, I must agree also with you on the revenue side in terms of uh, the finance bill being an omnibus bill and things that uh, we can secure from the finance bill that uh, is seem to have been lost. But you've also touched on issues touching on KRA, and there are systemic problems in KRA. And uh, you and me know that uh, our 